If I was in my prime, who would I want to play one-on-one -on -one with? Um, that list is very long. I start off with Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Kobe Bryant in his prime, LeBron in his prime, D. Wade in his prime, Melo. That's a good start. Yeah. I don't think I lose. Hey guys, it's Steve with Basketball with Steve, and I want to hear your guys' opinion on whether or not you think the players I will mention can beat Michael Jordan one-on-one. -on -one. I will explain why I think they would win, and you guys let me know in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's begin. Gets the ball from Hugh Evans. He looks, he looks, he looks. He gives to Jordan. Jordan to the circle, puts the shot in the air. Good! So the first thing to understand is that Michael Jordan was 6 foot 6 inches tall, 195 pounds in his prime. If you know anything about basketball, you would know that he is incredibly undersized for a player of his height. The first person I believe would beat Michael Jordan is Kobe Bryant. They love to get it into Nash's hand, and they do. Ball knocked away, stolen by If you don't believe me, let MJ tell you himself. That's a good start. Yeah. I don't think I lose. Other than Kobe Bryant because he steals all my moves. In Kobe's prime, he was 6'6", 215 pounds. That would give Kobe a huge advantage, and on top of that, Kobe is incredibly intelligent both offensively and defensively. And to be honest, if anyone knows Jordan's game, move for move, it is Kobe, which again would give Kobe the advantage over MJ. Kobe is also a better shooter, which means even if MJ stops him from driving to the basket, Kobe can just pull up from anywhere. And on top of that, Kobe is incredible in the post, but do you know why he is so good in the post? because he studied one of the greatest post playing guards in NBA history, Michael Jordan. Like Jordan said, he stole his moves. However, this would be a perfect case of the student finally beating the teacher. Look out, Ademeyer on the pick and oh. roll, fucked by Wade! This is good if it goes, yes! Oh! He did it again! Dwayne Wade is one of the three best shooting guards to ever play this game. The other two are obviously Kobe and MJ. Remember how I said Jordan and Kobe were great defenders? Well, Wade was even better defensively. Wade is one of the best defensive players of all time, and he is one of the leading shot blocking guards in NBA history. Although Wade is 2 inches shorter than Jordan, he is 220 pounds all muscle. Wade is just too quick and athletic for Jordan to stop him from driving to the basket. And if Wade eventually gets tired from constantly driving to the basket, he can back down Jordan and use his exquisite post moves and otherworldly strength to score. Is anyone noticing a trend when it comes to all time greats? Yes, they all have great post moves. I really don't have to explain this one, but for all the people that want me to, I will give a brief explanation. LeBron James is 6 foot, 8 inches tall, 250 pounds. He is the most athletic player in NBA history. He is a great defender. With the advantages of height, weight, and athleticism, LeBron can just bully Jordan down low in the post. And if Jordan forces LeBron James to go left like he said, LeBron would make the majority of his jump shots. Why? Well, because one, he is a better shooter than Jordan. If you don't believe me, you can do your research and look it up yourself. And two, if you know anything about basketball, you would know forcing a right-handed player left is actually beneficial to the offensive player because his elbow will already be aligned to the rim, which means the jump shot is all one motion. However, if you force a right-handed player right, he has to turn his body to adjust his elbow so he can align his elbow with the rim, which is why I don't understand why Jordan would force LeBron, of all people, left when LeBron never mastered the turnaround right shoulder jump shot like Carmelo and Kobe did. McGrady was 6'8", 210 pounds, all muscle. Now, MJ would probably have a better chance against him than anyone else on this list, but McGrady was just too good offensively. He was athletic, he was tall, he was long, and he had a very good jump shot, something Jordan never had. And in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, you should always go with the best shooter, because at the end of the day, in a one-on-one, -on -one, most of the shots will be jump shots. We'll throw in. 
Kevin Durant is just unguardable. He is 6'9", 240 pounds with a 7'6 wingspan. There is no way Jordan would be able to get up a shot on Kevin Durant or even stop him from shooting the basketball. KD is one of the best scorers in NBA history and he is literally the most unguardable player ever. He is a freak of nature and to be honest, it is unfair to defenders because no one can stop him, not even LeBron James. Pierce driving on Stoudemire, the jumper, yes! With four tenths of a second left! One of the game's greatest players ever, Paul Pierce, was the one that destroyed numerous superstars throughout his career, ripping their hearts out of the chest to the likes of LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, Kobe Bryant, and Tracy McGrady. He is 6'7", 235 pounds, unathletic, but incredibly strong and would destroy Jordan in the post. Plus, Pierce is an incredible shooter. And last but not least, Carmelo is probably the best scorer in NBA history in terms of overall offensive skill set. Melo is 6'8", 245 pounds and would annihilate Jordan because there is no way to stop Carmelo. First thing to understand is Carmelo is one of the strongest players in NBA history. But Carmelo has so many ways to score, it is literally uncountable. He can use his handle to drive by you or literally create a little bit of space to get up a jump shot. He can pull up from 30 with you in his face. He can back you down. He can use footwork and his sizing up ability, his post up ability. I mean, he literally has everything. His right shoulder jump shot, left shoulder jump shot. He, he literally has everything. It's ridiculous. He's honestly one of the best scorers in NBA history. And those are the seven players that would beat Michael Jordan one-on-one. -on -one. Anyway, thank you for watching. And as always, stay awesome and keep moving forward.